today we've um i'm with max here you might remember max but right. you've seen him out on the boat with me um now max wants to get into beach fishing so um what we've done is we've come down to angler's den and we're going to have a chat with glenn about continental rods and setting up a beach beach outfit uh and then take it from there so right. that's the plan for today so so here we are, we're at Angler's Den, Max and Glyn, we've oh, met yeah. before, um, and as I've explained, Max is thinking about getting into uh, beach fishing, and so we've come down to sort of pick Glyn's brains on um, setting up a Conti rod um, setup <laughs> system, really, uh, and I'll let, let I'll, I shall just be a fly on the wall. Right, Max, um, my first question I ask anyone is, what level are you at beach fishing? Are you a complete beginner? Are you I have, intermediate? I have cast before, but I would put myself as a beginner. You're a beginner? <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, as, as mentioned a minute ago, um, we do a lot of uh, con conti rods now, continental rods. It's okay. something that changed about 15 years ago. Yep. Uh, quite a fundamental change in the sea angling, so a lot of rods change from the your traditional 12, 13 foot rods. They're still yep. available. Some people still use them, and they, and they work That's fine. Used That's probably what you've been so, used yeah. to. Yep. Um, but now a lot of us use uh, what we call continental they're, they're called continental rods because they, they originated over on the continent. Um, it makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And we suddenly started seeing these 15, 16 foot rods being used. For a while, okay. And then they started to trickle into this country okay. about 15 years ago. Um, and yeah, we, we sort of picked up on them and realised that actually, you know, it, our conditions are slightly unique compared to Conti rod, mm -hmm. uh, continental. Um, but. You know there are plenty of there on the market, and, and and over the years they've got better and better, more yep. more suited to the to the British sort of conditions okay. as well. Um, so yeah, so a lot of you, a lot of the rods you'll see on here are conti rods, continental rods. So that means 14, 15 foot, three longer. piece, yeah. yeah, and three piece. As oh well. okay. You know, so whereas the traditional rods used to be two, now all the conti rods being 15 foot, you know, obviously two two seven and a half foot sections. I mean there are rods that are like that, uh, predominantly they're, they're they're three section rods which makes it much easier for carrying um, and and you know some people you know, back in the day 10 years ago used to say I'm not so sure about the strength of a three-piece rod forget it you know yeah. modern technology Still that's a beautiful so far, absolutely yeah. yeah so modern technology three-piece rods so even from your from your your starter type uh, rods uh, right up to your, your top high-end rods they're all three-piece um, which makes them uh, much easier as I say to, to carry around, to carry around. Yeah. and yeah it's much more user-friendly if you like so from a beginner's point of view, mm -hmm. I always start, you know, I mean, what we don't do, I mean, um, you can buy really cheap starter rods yeah. in, in the two-piece market, mm -hmm. which are just, you know, they're, they're absolute beginner rods. Which are great. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, uh, they're no frills. They're, they're ideal for mackerel in. Um, they're, yeah. really, they're not really and in fishing rods but exactly yeah, they're just to yeah. get people started to get down and they work and they're absolutely brilliant yeah. um, we don't tend to do that priced rod in the continental rod because at 14 15 foot if you have very very cheap materials they tend to be much bigger and much floppier and they don't really achieve you're actually better off with a 12 or 13 foot um, rod made of um, uh, conventional materials than you are going for a continental rod right. um, it wouldn't necessarily work so that doesn't mean that all oh, they start at 300 pounds because they don't uh, but what that means is they don't tend to start at the, the cheap end of like 30 40 pounds that you can buy rod. yeah i mean you can get them we've looked at them don't not, really rate them particularly yeah, so what yeah. we tend to look at is like a starting yeah. price range of good rods and these are usable rods, sort yeah. of rods that you know would absolutely seem fine you're looking at you know you don't have to pay the earth but we're talking about 80 90 odd pounds for a rod for a three-piece contour yeah. rod that will absolutely work that will feel completely different to the rod that you remember from yeah. x years ago yeah. um these are slim i mean these these rods effectively if we if we reverse back 20 years ago would have been much more high price rods yeah. fundamentally even the continental rods we've yeah. seen a, a fundamental change in those over the last 10 15 years mm -hmm. and certainly in the last five years we've seen a, a big sea change and i'll explain why um, a traditional rod a traditional 15 foot rod for say for argument's sake would be this one this is a good rod by the way this is the um, I think this is the agility yeah 15 yeah. foot lovely Tr very traditional very very nice bit of kit yep it's a good all-rounder um, it's got a traditional tip on it okay we can't put the 15 foot we're not big enough <laughs> but um we normally take them outside but it's a bit blurry today yeah. but it's got a, a traditional tip so it's got nice fine it will show yeah. bite indication um but yeah but it's more of a, a stiffer slightly stiffer in the tip okay now what, are, what you may see on here 
Um, oh, as you'll see, yeah. lots of rods with very, very tight tips, yeah. almost yeah. like the yeah. yeah. feeder tops. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you think, wow, is that really man enough for sea fishing? Well, they are, um, but they give fantastic bite indication. You've got that very... That's right, yeah. and especially when we're using braid, um, these really come into their own. Um, really I mean, yeah. they are really responsive, and you know, with braid, like you just said, you know, there's no stretch, so everything is shown. So we can see bites that you just wouldn't see on mono. You could cast, especially if you're distance casting. A lot of us like distance casting on in certain conditions, not yep. always. Um, but if you're putting a lead out a long way, obviously with mono, you've got a lot of stretch, a lot of tide. Sometimes it's a small fish. We get a lot of dabs and small fillet fish. Like like they see a bite, uh, wind in, think, oh. There's something on there, I didn't even know it was on there. <laughs> Whereas with braid and these sorts of fine tip rods, integrated tip rods out, we see everything or pretty much everything. Oh, so you know, which is quite useful because it doesn't put more fish on, it, it doesn't mean you catch more fish, but what it means is um, you are aware of what's going on yeah. way more. Um, at, sure, at, at you're, not, you're not waiting for a period no, of time that's right. you've got a fish on. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so it effectively, it does mean more fish because mm. you know sometimes you think, well, another bite, I better change well, the bait. And if you're lucky, <laughs> and um, and you wind in and, and you've got two fish on, you think, oh, I could have, if I'd have known that, I would have wound in clear, maybe caught more fish. Yeah, so. yeah. Especially for a competition angle. So yeah, so what we've seen a change is we, we've seen a change to these um, integrated, they're called integrated bob tips. Mm -hmm. So these, these, these tips are integrated into the blanks, they're not pushing tips. Yeah. Um, we did go through a small phase in between sort of the traditional Conti rods and these, mm -hmm. we had ones with push-in tips. Right. They tend to have moved on from those now and now they're fully integrated into the rods. Yeah. So we've got an integrated fine tip. Now these, yeah, they are. I mean, these are fantastic. I mean, we, we've seen, um, we've seen again, a fundamental change in the last few years of the species that we catch. One right. of the main ones for us, which is fantastic, all along the south coast, mm. pretty much, um, is place, place fishing. Yeah. Um, and they tend to come in the winter. They mm -hmm. start in the winter, sort of end of January, beginning of Feb. So that cold weather. Provided that, wow, it's provided it's the conditions, it must be food. Um, they don't like coloured water, so they tend to steer clear, strangely enough, of the spring. I don't know if you know, but we get this algae bloom in the water, yes. the May rock, yeah. that algae bloom. And they don't like that at all. They're a very clean water fish, so they tend to move offshore when that comes in. So they tend to come in and feed up um, after they spawned. And it can be, well, it has been this year and it was last year, from January, so mm -hmm. sort of mid-January, and they come right through February. Our problem is, is obviously the weather at the moment is shocking. And so they don't like dirty water, they don't like rough sea particularly, no. so they move offshore. But they're there, we know they're there in big numbers because we've already caught them. So that's when these rods really come into their own. Because the, the, the conditions that we would normally want to fish for place um, in the winter, or a spring day would be a flat calm, yep. bright sunny day. Now, if I rewind a few years ago, that's right, if I rewind a few years ago, you know, we get people come in and say, oh, I want to go fishing today. It's a flat calm winter's day, bright sunny day, water's clear, you know, okay, just enjoy the day. You might catch a crab, you might get a ling, but you know, just enjoy the winter sun. But now we can target place, proper place fishing, and you get numbers of them. It is their perfect conditions. Um, so it's really good. So this is a species that we can now, you know, um, safely say it's here. Yeah, absolutely, we target it. So so we get the best of both worlds now, which is brilliant. So traditionally, we always like a rough sea, mm -hmm. dirty sea, acts like a washing machine, so it shows a lot of bait up. Now, um, when we when we get the opposite to that, we can say, oh, okay, we've got, got place fishing. Now. Absolutely, and proper place fishing. So these rods really come into their own. If you're place fishing yep. at range, because they tend to be a bit further out, they're not normally a, a short range fish. Some fish are, bass especially, flounders, uh, yep. you know, quite a lot of the species, you can place catch them at short range. Beach. Place fishing. traditionally, not, not exclusively again, but traditionally will come to a further casting, yep. which is where sort of conti rods come into their own. Because yeah. they're good at casting yeah. light to medium weights, long distances, and showing fantastic yeah. bite indications. Well, I suppose lighter weight, longer rod. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, greater casting art. I mean, it's basic. It's basic sort of mechanics, really. Mm -hmm. It's how they work. Think, well, why does fifteen foot rod work better? Well, it's down to casting arc. It's down to getting that lead well. leverage. Exactly. Yeah. It's just basic mechanics. So you get that lead moving further away from you. Obviously, provide oh, stuff. But there is a there is a um, um, you, you, there is a correlation between. Obviously, you have to be able to get the rod 
to turn over fast enough. Yeah. It's no good having a massively long rod and not being able to turn it over. No, no. It's all to do with tip speed and lead speed. And so if you can turn the rod over quickly, mm -hmm. but it's a much longer rod and get that lead moving much faster, yeah. it's further away from you, it will travel at a faster speed. So that's why these rods, Sorry, that's why we've right adopted them. Absolutely, yeah. 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 So that's why we've sort of yeah. adopted them and taken them on board because we, 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 get, we get it. And, and yeah. back in the day, a 15 foot yeah. rod, we wouldn't have been able to pick it up. It's too heavy. Yeah. You know, so we couldn't turn it over. Yeah. So it didn't work. No. Whereas yeah. now it can. You know, yeah. again, lighter, stronger materials True. means that we can we can use a 15 foot rod that probably weighs the same, if not less, than the old traditional 13 foot rod. Yeah. Yeah. So happy day. So we can, as long as we can turn that over uh, at a good pace, we can get far uh, greater distances yeah, from the same amount of effort, or, 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 and which is great. It's only great for us that are getting older, but it's great for everyone, you know what I mean? It's, it's really good. Cool. So, I mean, ones that, I've, ones that I've used in the past have been, like, say, heavy, yeah. and it's the casting's been a bit uh, inconsistent. Yeah. So, you know, you... Yeah. You'll what find these they are a joy to use. I mean, once you once we get, we're not, probably not going to go over the beach today because it's raging yeah, on there. Well. We'll talk you through uh, some rods, some different sure. types of rods, so you can have a look at the different types that are available. Yeah. And then hopefully one day soon we'll, we'll get over the beach and you yeah, can try yeah, them out. That would be ideal. Yeah, and then you can actually really feel the difference as well. And you'll feel the difference between you know the lower price rods, which are yeah. absolutely fit for purpose. They're really good yeah, yeah. for off the ground casting. They're superb. Uh, but then. Yeah. The slightly yeah. mid middle price rods and then the high price rods. We'll take one over just for fun. Sure. I wouldn't, okay. I wouldn't even advise you to look at the high price rods. No, I wouldn't. No, I would. I never do. You know, sure. you need to know whether you're going to enjoy it or not. Or you like it. And these, these are perfectly adequate and fit yeah. for purpose to get a lot of fun out of. And 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 stick with those. And that may be all you ever need to do. You know. Sure. So that's that's a good thing. There are plenty of those sort of rods on the market. Yep. And um, these are more specialist rods for match anglers and guys that want to absolutely yeah, yeah. get that extra 10 meters of casting, you know. So, yeah, that's what they're there for. But you may or may not see, yeah, you may or may not see the advantage of it. I mean, some people think that if I pay 500 pounds for a rod, it's going to cast me further, yeah. And it can do in the right hands, but in the wrong hands, it won't. In which case, you, you might, might be better off, exactly. Exactly, that's right. So, a, a good starter one. This is a traditional. Rod, so this is a traditional tip, 15 foot traditional yep. tip. This is one of the new one so this is a Yuki, a nice, very good brand, mm -hmm. yeah. very, very good continental brand. I, I use Yuki myself. One of the ones I use is a Yuki top yep. range one. Very, very good brand. We do sort of like the, the, the lower price, middle price, and then the very, very high price. Yep. Um, but for a low price Yuki, uh, you know, normally you, you get these sort of like these brands and they don't go down to the lower prices because they're well, these do. They know how to make rods. Absolutely. Yeah. This is a very, very nice one of their new rods um, out on the market. It's called the Plus kit. Yes, yep. it's really nice, really nice bit of kit. Yeah. Notice the eyes are slightly different. Okay, I'll just very quickly explain that. Um, a different type of eyes. These are um, low rider eyes. They're more traditionally suited to using um, with braided lines, actually. Okay. So bear that in mind as to what you're looking at. Um, you can use them with mono, yep. um, but generally if we're looking at mono or braid, we would look at um, using these, which are, new, are relatively new, which are cave guides. And you'll notice these are, these eyes, they lean forward. Yep. They don't come traditionally straight like the traditional eyes would. And again, okay. that, that that's a new innovation in the last X years. Why is five, that? Why is that? Well, because it leans forward, because obviously when you're using fixed balls, yep. you're casting, power casting, mm -hmm. you get a tremendous amount of large coils coming off in the explosion of a cast. Yep. So that's with trying to feed it. Yeah, so what happens is, if you've got an eye that's that's upright, you've got more chance, if you're gonna get a snap off with a fixed ball, which you don't very often, but if you do, it can loop over the eye. So uh, if they push that eye away from you, it's less likely to be able to loop up yeah, over it. So yeah, it, it feeds through better. It's a really yeah. simple, um, thing that's come out in the last design few years. Change, slight though. design change, yeah. but it works. Yeah. It works a treat. Um, and so that's why they call called guys and they lean forward. Uh, and they do really work, especially for if you're using fixed balls. Yeah. Yeah. They're more predominantly used. I mean, multiplier users do use them, but that's less of an issue. Mm -hmm. um, because obviously the multiplier line comes off and feeds, it goes yeah. up and through. Whereas a fixed ball comes off doing that, so it's more likely to Quite get in control. That's right, yeah. yeah, and it's more likely to loop over mm -hmm. because of the nature of the way the line is moving. So this one here is a really nice sort of this this one, the white one here, which is yep. a Trunks Pro Banzai, lovely lovely bit of kit, 14 foot. Um, again, you've got the integrated tip, or you've got this one at 15 foot, which is again integrated tip. See, this one's got the eyes. I just 
explain to you, which oh, yeah. is the uh, K guides. Okay, this one has got the the low rider. Mm -hmm. So if you were ever look, if you were looking at braid, yeah. you know what? I think I like the idea of going straight for braid. Yeah. Then you, we could use any of them, but but that one particular um, specifically for specifically it. for yeah. braid. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was so. Moving up from there, so that's sort of like the, the middle to, uh, sorry, the lower price rise. So yep. you've got this one here, I think I'm just like 90 odd pounds. This one here, uh, 85. Uh, we've also got a Black Rock. Black Rock's a really good make. It's an independent uh, make. It's not one of the big ones that you might have heard of. Y yeah, we I've do never a lot, heard of them. Well, we do a lot of Black Rock stuff. They do, mm -hmm. they do carp, they do, they do spinning, pike. Um, I'll show you, actually, in a minute, the next step up, I think, if you were looking at the sort of mid price rod, yeah. by mid price I mean about 200 odd pounds, mm -hmm. is really only one rod yes. um, that I would absolutely, well, well I've got one as well, oh, funny uh, enough, I use yeah. it and it's the Black Rock SS10, um, it's a Continental uh, 15 foot 3 yeah. piece, um, 15 foot 10 actually, um, I think I've got here, I should have, yeah, and I'll show you that one, now that's more, that was made predominantly, strangely enough, for the, um, for the British market. So it was made more with the British market with these sorts of conditions that we yeah, yeah. outside today. Um, it was made with those in mind more. So it's yeah. a bit of an all-rounder. So what you've got here is you've got these rods that are fantastic for some yeah, shy bites at range, yeah. flat calm days. I mean, don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean that you can't use them in a windy day. You can use them all through, so that's, yeah, yeah. that's not the issue. Um, but what you've got with the, let's have a look at it while we've talked about it. Not necessarily that one down. Yeah, if I just lift that one down and show you. Because what this one has got, I want to put this one together. Yeah, well, I think we need to see the action of this. It's a particularly large rod. And as I say, this one is an all-rounder. Mm -hmm. So this one will handle these sorts of conditions today. Maybe, yeah. you wouldn't want to be on the beach today, but slightly less than this. Yeah. This will handle it. Yeah. Um, and what, what I mean by that is you don't need, when it's really rough conditions, you don't need the ultra fine tape, particularly in the middle of the night. Right? And what this has got, it's got a traditional um, oh, okay, yeah, tip action to it. So it's got a very, very nice action tip. So it will show bites. It's not yeah, like it's just a stiff rod that's not going yes. to handle roughly. So if you'd like to if you can get that in the shop, if you get right down there as if you were holding, as if you were fishing, that's yeah. it. We go back a little bit. So if we can get the action of the rods. So if you give that a lift up, lift it up as if you're fine. Give, give it a good lift, that's it. You see, oh, wow. the, yeah, you yeah. see the action of the tip. So that has got, it hasn't got the integrated really? tip, but what it has got, it's, so you, if you're fishing sideways on, if you can see it sideways on, yeah, yeah. this is how we fish yeah. it, oh, bite wow. indication, bite indication is fantastic. So it's got a traditional soft tips, thinner than the, the old fashioned tips that yeah, we yeah. fish with, but it hasn't got the integrated tip. Now this rod will then handle light conditions, but it, will also, super light as well, really. but it will also handle really, really the heavy conditions as well. So it's a bit of an all-rounder. So if you wanted something, you thought, oh, I like the idea, I'm going to, I only want to buy one rod um, initially, and I want something that I can use in lighter conditions, but also, this is really, I mean, it's probably our biggest selling this price rod by a country mile. Yeah, yeah. Because guys that want something that's going to tick all the boxes, um, this is it. This is it. Yeah, absolutely. And it is, it is brilliant. I've got, I've got one myself. I mean, I'm not afraid to use it. Now I can cast a fair way and, yeah, yeah. and I use it myself. Um, it's a brilliant big kit. So and it, mean, they are, just look at holding yeah. that. It's yeah. a lot longer, isn't it? Just oh, yeah. That, just having that three foot. Because I've been using a 12 foot rod. It's a big difference. Yeah. Massive difference. But interestingly, it's, it's a difference that you very quickly get used to. It's really light. Well, it's it's also yeah. light, but actually, interestingly yeah, yeah. enough, if you think that that's light in the buck section yeah. on this particular one, yeah. I think, let me just have a look and show you. So I've got a feeling that it has, yes. so much take them out, which it won't have done. It's actually got some removable weights. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So what happens is, and that, that, if you can imagine when you're casting with a long rod, your left hand is quite important. It is with casting anyway. Yeah. You know, I teach casting, and left hand is really important. Mm -hmm. you pull the log down. So consequently, if you've got... A, you know, quite a, a lot of rod because they're longer rods now. You know, 14, 15 foot. Yeah. Obviously, your left hand is really important when you're casting, and this helps with obviously with the weighted one. When you pull the rod in the right position and then you pull down, if you've got a bit of weight in there, it helps. It helps with your left hand pulling it down. So these were. Um, you'll find in here. There's probably about three ounce weights. There we are. Look, and they are removable. So you don't have to have them. So if you were in rough conditions yeah. and you were using a slightly heavier weight. 
I'd go and use these yep. because it would help. But if I was place fishing, like we said, in Probably flat calm, maybe a four or five ounce lead, don't need them. No, not necessarily yeah. not fighting the conditions, but this will help you. So that's another. It's even lighter. Yeah, yeah, if it's even lighter. You feel yeah. that now. And that's just really, Oh, there's nothing. Yeah, exactly. You know, but it's powerful. Wow. Very powerful rod. Very powerful. This one will cast up to seven ounces. I have used seven ounces in a match on this rod. And that's well, seven ounces plus bait. Seven so. ounces plus bait, absolutely. Um, I didn't, to be honest with you, I didn't pendulum cast that. I didn't swing it, mm -hmm. but it was so rough. When it's rough, I tend to go off the ground casting anyway, because I can ha I can control it better. Um, and, but that was with seven ounces in a match. In fact, it was our match last year. I used this rod. I switched to this rod with seven ounces on. So it's a real all-rounder. You can see it's got fine bite indication. It's powerful, but yeah, absolutely. But it, you know that. So it will. It will. It would do you for all conditions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can see why we like these rods. Don't get me wrong. I've got a fine tip rod because what some of us do now is we tend to, as, as you get into it, you know, instead of having well, back in the day, people used to buy two rods exactly the same. Well, I've never done that. I tend to favour buying. You've seen people with the stands. With yeah, I tend to favour buying different rods for different conditions. Okay, so I've got a rod that will handle rough match conditions. I've got another rod that's even heavier than this, which is. If I was, if I had to fish on a day like today, which I would choose not to, because in a match, as long as it was safe, um, I would use an even heavier rod that's got no bite in the You don't need it. You know, when it's raging, what you actually need is something that can project the heaviest lead you can get out there without collapsing the tip at all. You don't need bite indication because you're barely going to see any bites. You just need it to hold out, hopefully for 10, 15 minutes, and maybe catch a fish. That's not that's not pleasure fishing. That's you're not relying on actually feeding the fish. Exactly. So I've got a, a bit of a stick that I would use. There are conti rods that you can use for that as well. So I've also got the ultra light rod because although this is brilliant and, and it's fantastic as an all rounder yeah. for someone that wants something that I want. Use and, it, and I've used this by the way. There's a video of things of ours. I use this place fishing oh, okay. at Langley Point yeah. and just, just to do, just to um, uh, demonstrate the rod. Mm -hmm. um, and you see the bites just place fishing at Langley Point um, on, on, on this particular rod. So this is a good all rounder, yeah. um, but obviously, I've got a rod that's got the even finer tip, which I would choose to use even more so for place fishing. For someone that wanted an all rounder, if your budget allowed, mm -hmm. this would be I would tick all the boxes. Absolutely. All right, so that's awesome. One. I'll have 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, they really are good. And then this one, you know, I've got obviously have it, having one of these myself. Um, yeah, if when we get to go and have a go with them, you know, absolutely, you can, and you can do also, you can swing that one. I mean, that, this is a rod that you can. You know, I, I, I swing. Don't do it yeah, with them. I have. I do a conti. Sort of done that. Yeah, yeah. It was, I do my own con continental. So no. But it's basically it's a swinging off the ground cast. That's what yeah. they really work with. You don't do a full pendulum with them. Um, but what I call my own sort of a swinging continental cast. It just gets the lead moving a bit more, creates a bit more lead speed. It, it loads the rod a bit better. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it gets your, your gear off the ground as well. So if you're out there like we do, quite a lot of low tide fishing, sometimes I can wade out up to my knee and still cast that way. Whereas it puts you off the ground cast and you've got your terra firma. Yeah. So there's good advantages to being able to swing it, but it's not be all and end all. You know, a good off the ground rod most of these are, are built for and certainly will handle good off the ground casting yeah. which is what they're made for the same so we've got it you've got it quite unique here because it is very flat but, but quite away yes it is yeah we are we are to, well it's, it's really weird but it's quite steep shelving beaches so they are you know they're, they're quite deep yeah um you know relatively you know, compared to some places you know they are like 20 foot deep if you look at it high tide mm -hmm. but then you're right and then it very very much so it's down it's like those clean ground fishing so it's, yeah. it's it's deep water shingle beaches down onto sand yeah. and gullies which is what we want this is why we get the fish that we do we get a lot of flat fish yeah i mean not everywhere gets flat fish we, we're surprised we're quite we're quite sort of spoilt really in that you know we get all the flat fish here we get the sole flounder dab and place you know, we get all four flat, yeah. main flat fish, you know, um, which is fantastic really for yeah. us. And we can target those. Um, and of course, those being flat fish, they're not always giving you massive bites. You know, they do give slightly shyer bites, which is why this sort of form of fishing with braided lines and integrated hip rods is fantastic. It's really good. Um, and then we step up if you if you wanted to. Obviously, you then go into the 
the higher price. Yeah. So you're up into the sort of two to three hundred range and, and upwards from there. I mean, we can give a brief rundown. I, I, what, what I would say, as you felt the weight of that one and you marvelled yeah. about how light it was, I just want you to feel one that's 400 because you, this one in particular, this is a new company or new ish. Yeah. This is an Italian company called Italico. Mm -hmm. Okay, they make fantastic, they only make a few rods. We, we make a big, sort of like a two piece heavier rod, which is Again, it's the specifics which I won't go into because yep. it's not what you're looking at. Sure. But just feel this rod for the weight. It is, and this rod will handle six ounce leads, believe it or not. And it does. I've got customers that use them and absolutely love it. But for the sort of fishing, yeah, it was high, high spec carbon as well. Mm. Um, the sort of fishing that we do, again, like place fishing or just general all round fishing, not in a gale. But then you switch to something, um, yeah, slightly more user friendly in a go. I mean, I was saying people say, but is it because you can't use them in a go? So you can, if you chuck a six ounce lead, you can use it in a go. But why would you? Yeah. You know, why would you use a fine tip rod that is is as fantastic for for eighty percent of the sort of fishing that you do? Mm -hmm. Any old rod, I'm not being disrespectful, but can, can chuck a seven ounce lead when you don't need to see bite indication. Yeah, yeah. Any, you know, not any old rod, but a stick. <laughs> well, you, yeah, but you know what I'm saying. It's like, why would you use the ultimate? I've got, you know, I say I've got a very, very good, expensive um, Yuki rod. Mm. I would not, use, it will handle six ounce leads. Yeah. I can chuck it in a gale, but I won't. There's no point, really. this, to me, there's no point. No, I would no, rather no, use no, a, uh, 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 exactly, a, um, a cheaper, Stiffer rod mm -hmm. that's just got. If I'm only chucking seven ounces on it, and, and I want to get it out there, and that's what I would use. Sure. Um, and so, um, but just feel the way it's this one, because if you thought the other one was light, wait till you feel the weight of that. I mean, that I'll just feel. Yeah. yeah. That's like paper light. It's crazy. Isn't it? Yeah. I mean, and believe me, that's a powerful rod. That's wow. Yeah. There's nothing in it at all. Yeah. 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 That's, that's 15 foot. Um, and believe me, that will that will cast 150, 170 grams off the ground and pendulum. You know, wow. like swinging and it. And oh, absolutely, yeah. I'll cast that one, swinging it, no problem at all. And how, um, is that stiff all the way up to sort it's of? It's very stiff, but what you have got is got this lovely, fine but integrated tip again, integrates yeah. down here. Um, but it's you would hardly know it hasn't got the it doesn't look like it's a stuck in tip. Yeah. Um, it's 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 lovely. It's just again. I mean, imagine that. So yeah. You guys from sort of New Haven way. I mean, imagine place fishing the seafood. I mean, yeah. Just the ultimate rod. But yeah. So that's so. But what it does do, it tells you, well, okay, that's what I get for a hundred pound. Yeah, yeah. That's what I get for two hundred pound, which is brilliant. Yeah. It's all that's, what well, that's what I get for. Madness. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. How, how, how stiff is that in the butt? Can we just see? Can we just push the butt to see how how stiff? Oh, the stiff. Is? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is. Believe it or not, it's although it's put it on the floor. Just put it on the floor. Just put it on the floor. Oh. When you're testing the butt, so, so what you've got, you get to here. I mean, that, I mean that's, wow. That's, that's, no, that's, no, that's, yeah. That's not that's not giving at all. Barely. You know. You see, you've got masses of power here and the midsection. Yeah. Midsection is where your power is. See, people say to me, I mean, you probably know this anyway, but I'll just explain. Yeah. Is is about the tips. I said, well, how can you come? Cast a five ounce off of that tip. We don't cast a five off the tip. If you ever, if you ever see, I mean, there's plenty of videos now. I've got videos of casting. If you ever look at videos of casting, yeah. if you can stop the video as the person is doing the power stroke, mm -hmm. yeah. where the majority of the power, well, all the power, is through the blank. You see the blank bent, yeah. but the tip's in a straight line. Uh, yeah. Because what happens is, is this bit bends. The midsection bends dramatically, the yeah. first bit of the tip section blank, but actually the tip, where because the lead is following the tip. Uh, so as you hit the power stroke, as you really put the power in to turn the rod over, yeah. the actual tip is in a straight line. Yeah. Yeah. It's not bent, you're not casting off of that tip, you know, unless you're doing something completely wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and the tips are incredibly strong because of that yes. parabola. So if you took the tip and bent the end tip, only you'll snap it. Mm. Yeah, because absolutely. it's not designed just to bend in that last no. bit, it's bending in the whole parabola of, of the... My, one of my biggest fun bits, and see I'm later, sure you'll later. never do it, um, is when I see people test a tip. And I'm not going to do it. Oh, and they get it right. But they do that. Uh, the thumb there. Yeah. And press the tip like that. And what you're doing is you're putting a fulcrum point right there. Yeah. You yeah. can so easy. It's, that tip is never meant to bend like with that. a fulcrum there. All right. And people I'll, go, oh, just check the tip all the time. If you've got a chest, it's 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 a tip, so. just hold a tip and let someone bend it, or just yeah. hold it yeah. and pull it from there. That's how it's supposed to bend. It's never meant to bend from there. I've snapped fly rods doing that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Hard lesson learned not to be done again. Okay, so that's rods. Awesome. Are you happy with? Yeah, what you've yeah. seen right. and it gives you a rough idea 
Or, I mean, there are obviously, as you can see, we've got plenty there. We could spend all day going sure, through all sure. of them. But I just wanted you to have yeah, a rough no, idea yeah. of yeah. the low. And believe me, you know these these lower price ones, the eighty, the ninety, they're yeah. absolutely fit for purpose. I mean, they are yeah. very, very good rods. I mean, this one in particular, you know, is a bit of a favourite of mine because when we went to uh, we had a casting <laughs> show. Well, we had a casting <laughs> show uh, over we and the guys from Tronics came. Mm -hmm. And we had all the Yuki rods. We were all casting some of the, you know, the better quality rods. Yep. Some of the guys turned up. It was a good day. And he had this one, the rep, and I know him really well, Chris. And he said, have a go with this one again. I said, oh, that's all right. Have a look at the, these rods. You know, like, yeah, you know, yeah. fell into it stupidly. And he said, look, go and have a go. Five ounces on that. I said, okay, I'll give it an off the ground cast. I'll take it in. And I've just, just hit this rod, and it just kept going and going. I thought, that's ridiculous. I said, how much it retail for? He said, 80 odd crowd. Just you're probably left out like four or five hundred pounds. Yeah, runs. you know. So they are really good, you know. So that's yeah, yeah. what I say to you is, you know, don't don't think, you know, I'm, I'm showing you the range. I don't need that. No, to start no, no, no. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, there are these are absolutely fit for purpose. They're not a question of oh, well, you know, you, they are. If, if if you went for a rod like that and you only ever start, unless you unless you say to me, well, I want to get into pendant casting mm -hmm. and I want to get into match fishing. Yeah, that's a different ball sort game. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a next step up, and then you're looking at stuff that's you know that you you need to gain that yeah. extra 10 or 15 meters yeah. and then you're looking at a higher price mm -hmm. kit but for pleasure angling to cast a good long distance yeah. to see all the bites that yeah, you need to see deal. absolutely yeah. so anything awesome. from anything from that sort of price range this one another one cracking bit of kit this yuki mm -hmm. so this one this one um and then and obviously my one of my favorites is the all-rounder which is yeah. the ess10 which is uh you know a bit of everything really that's uh sort of all things to everyone yeah okay awesome so glenn do you do um do an exchange deal so if he were to buy the the cheaper rod mm -hmm. and then six months down the line he's you know he's got that itch that he needs to scratch and he's like oh, i want to buy the more expensive rod would yeah. you take that 80 pound rod back and offset it against yes, the more expensive rod? yeah obviously i mean we price it accordingly but yes we do absolutely yeah we offer a, a trading in fact we offer a trading to people with older older rods anyway we always have them there's always a market yeah. For yeah. certain second hand stuff. We're not we don't buy second hand, we never have done. No, no. But absolutely trading. We've That's done it trade, with, it Yeah, sense. we, we so, have done. Yeah. So I mean it, it happens quite a lot where people buy stuff exactly exactly as you just described yeah. there. So yeah, they, they buy something Get that is more oh, I really oh, like this, time. okay. But I really don't want to, you know, have to have two or three rods. Yeah, absolutely yeah. we do. Because oh, there's oh, always yeah. a market for especially with good good quality stuff. Yeah.